I'm Brian Alexander I'm with Time.com, and we're doing Reader's Questions with Ewan McGregor, the star of The Men Who Stare at Goats. This is from Michelle Petit in Tucson, Arizona. In The Men Who Stare at Goats, some of the characters are part of a U.S. military unit that use their psychic powers. Did you find the Jedi references funny? I did find them funny. There, there are several references to the, the name Jedi, the, the warrior monks, as they refer to themselves, in this secret unit of the, of the U.S. military called themselves Jedis. And it wasn't something that we or the writers created for this film, The Men Who Stare at Goats. It, it is fact. That's what they call themselves, the Jedi. And so I have scenes with George Clooney, who plays one of these Jedi, and he says, I'm a Jedi. And I, I had the line where I look at him and I go, what's a Jedi? And he says, I'm a Jedi. I go, you're a Jedi? And it was quite amusing to play those scenes. And the director claims, because I asked him, it was one of the first questions I asked him when I met him, Grant, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, he claims that that's the first time he'd ever thought about it and he never, it never crossed his mind, which I thought sounds a little convenient, <laughs> I think. Nishant Grover in Radford, Virginia asks, what was it like to be part of the Star Wars franchise and to work with George Lucas? It's almost like being in something historical in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I was a huge fan of the, the, the original films when I was a kid. Um, my uncle appears in all three of those first. He's an actor, Dennis Lawson, and he played a part called Wedge in the first three movies. So for me, it, there was something really extraordinary about getting a chance to, to be the young Alec Guinness. And I'll always be very happy and proud that I was, was in there. Mm -hmm. It's great. Andrew LaRock of Santa Rosa, California asks, many people are pleasantly surprised by your singing voice in Moulin Rouge. Would you ever consider a singing career? No. I, I, I'd like to very much to be able to be a better musician. I like to play, I'm a very poor guitar player and I, I like to plonk away on the piano. I'd like very much to be a better musician, but I think just for my pleasure, you know, or, or to be able to play music with other people, but not really to record it. I, I, I'm not sure that I really have a voice, uh, if you like, or a sound of my own, or I don't know why I would be doing it. I don't want to do it just to be, to have an album. I, right. I'm not interested, <laughs> but I think if you, if you felt like this is my music and people should hear it, then I can yeah. understand. Right. But, um, I, I, so I don't, I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> you right. never know. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Shanti Tredgel Carroll from Cork, Ireland, and I'm sure I botched that name. So no, Cork is right. No, thank Oh, you. her name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I got Cork right. Thank you very much. I'm so worried uh, about Cork. It's just <laughs> saying, as it's spelled. Yeah. Cork. As, as a Scottish actor, how different is it for you to work on a non-British production? Every production is different from the last. Uh, that's the truth of it. Uh, that's what's kind of brilliant about making films, is there's never, you never really have the same experience twice. I mean, uh, the thing that has more effect, I suppose, is budget. Uh, the, the amount of money behind the film has a, has a direct impact on how it feels on set. Um, the, o the other difference is accents. Uh, if you're is, is playing an American as opposed to playing um, in my own accent, but it's very rare that I would play in my own accent anyway. Sometimes I do. In The Goats, uh, you play uh, Michigan. Yeah. Your character's from yeah. Me or sort of mid vaguely in Michigan, yeah. <laughs> vaguely Michigan, yeah. Did anything trip you up on that accent? Or was it? A uh, no, I quite liked it. I mean, I, I quite liked it. It was interesting because I didn't have. Usually, I have a dialect coach, and I didn't have one on this because <laughs> Ford one. So I, uh, I, I worked with a dialect coach, and then I was on my own. And it's very scary when you you don't a dialect. It's a very interesting relationship with a dialect coach because you know that that one person is in charge of your accent, and if they hear something that's wrong, they'll come in quietly and tell you and they disappear again. But without one, it means the director's given you dialect notes and the grip gives you dialect notes and your other actors are going, oh, that sounded a bit... Suddenly everybody, and you just go, you feel terribly at sea, it's horrible. You've taken part in two televised motorcycle trips. What drew your interest to motorcycles and are there plans for another trip? I've always ridden bikes since I was 18, 19, I've ridden motorcycles and it's, it's my one um, main passion and hobby and my, I collect I've got a small collection of old motorcycles and I, 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 I like them as objects and I like them as a means of transportation. I enjoy riding bikes very much. So I set about organising a trip with my friend Charlie Boorman and we put our team together so that we could document it and film it and um, we went with a very small, we went with a one-man film crew, Claudio, and uh, he, he rode with us on bikes, so very often it was just the three of us on bikes. And in 2004 we rode from London round to New York across Europe and Central Asia 
through Kazakhstan and Mongolia and Russia and Siberia. And then across, uh, we flew with the bikes to Anchorage in Alaska and then rode from Alaska to New York. And then in 2007, we decided to uh, do another trip and we rode from the top of Scotland to Cape Town. And we made a series called Long Way Round. And it, and it, it was, it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life, really. When we came home, we had the sense of human, human beings being really supportive of one another. We really did. We think of, we, we have a tendency in, when, in Europe and America to think that this is what life is like, you know, that the, our way of life is the way of life. And our, our journeys took us really outside of that. And, and we met people who live a completely different way of life, a different kind of existence in the nomadic people in Mongolia or the Highlanders in Ethiopia, you know, people have got no, really no concept of what our life is like. And so their kindness and, and the people who have n the least are, seem to be the most generous, you know, the people who have very, very little would uh, have us, invite us into their homes or huts or whatever and share the food that they had with us and we, we, we would be able to share the food that we had with them and uh, th those moments were things you never forget.